Okay, window uh, installation, because everything we did to these houses, you're doing all this great uh, wall work. We had to decide whether the window was good or did it need replacing. Two of the houses, the windows were in very good shape. One of the houses, she had just had the windows changed like three years ago. So we, we have a strategy for that, and I'll show you. And we actually used what was called, I, I, I call it a triple track window for the exterior. It was just to keep the plane the same. I learned if you use the word storm window, the connotation of that just scares people. They think of mobile homes, leaking, fogged up interior window, all kinds of connotation comes with storm window. So, but actually that's what we were adding to the houses. And the other two houses, we put, um, we, we, we put a new window. Yeah. 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 Do double. Uh, it, it was trip. They call it a triple track. I think there's two two pane. But we're not we're not relying on that. That's mainly just a a, a front. Well, I, I meant that it was double. Was it just a storm? It, it was just a storm window. Yeah. Because we got air air leakage is optimized. So the the problem that causes storm windows to fail is there's a bunch of air behind them and it's a different temperature air. So w basically that was our wall cavity. That's just an extension of our wall cavity. Uh, this is just a side view of kind of what's happening again, some of the detail. I've got, a, I think, a better thing that I built in um, SketchUp that I'll run through. The jam trim, five quarter, all that stuff. Okay, this is what we kind of started with. So we have the uh, existing wall down to the sheathing, siding gone. First thing we do is build a window buck. The window buck is going to accept the new window. So we got the rough opening, we, we defined the rough opening, and now the window can be bought to fit the rough opening. So we made the rough openings based on windows that we specified, you know, looking at the house. Another interesting thing here that we solved, a lot of older houses have sash weight cavities. The window is old, it's got those anchor weights in, the bo in both sides. When, when a typical window replacement occurs, they don't take care of that side, uh, side cavity. That's left as basically a short circuit from the exterior to the interior. So the window buck actually, and you'll see after, uh, the window buck took care of that uh, cavity. So this is our first time. So count the times around the house. So we, this is our second trip around the house. And this is where, we're, that's, this is where the costs get high, and that's why the next the next level of research project I'm doing, we're trying to drive this down with different, with more robust materials. But so here they've uh, they've taped and put up an exterior air barrier. Rigid insulation will work fine as an air barrier. But again, the bogies that I set in the specifications were very defined. To make sure they met them, we specified also an air barrier sheathing. So this was um, a product called um, Thermax. Or thermoply, thermoply. I'm sorry. Which is not an insulator. Thing? No, no. It's uh, it comes in three different structural grades. We chose the middle grade. It's a little bit thicker than cardboard, and it comes in four by eight sheets. And it actually has a nailing pattern suggested. Um, and I've got pictures of it. Here we're flashing, taping. Uh, they used peel and stick, and flash the pan, slope that pan. So basically. They're getting to treat this renovated house as this is what you would do with a new house. I mean, this is exactly how you should build your uh, uh, window uh, jams uh, uh, and, and set your windows in, a, in new construction. First layer of uh, rigid poly iso taped. Second layer and the window back in. And we've put the strapping on. Flashed. And then the uh, furring strips for the siding. So, right. So we've left, again, remember what, what the house looked like from the inside. We didn't want to compromise that. So there's one trip. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then siding. Ten trips. That's what we're after in this next project. But that, that, that was the biggest learning right there. We, they, they hit the bogey, but it was very expensive. And you did that for all of the windows? Yep. Yep. 
if the window came out. I mean, if it didn't, we, two of the houses, we still did the window buck and flashed it, but we just put a storm window there. So the, the, the real window was still doing the work behind. And that was left in the whole time? Yeah. So your, your buck came on the sunny outside? Yeah. Yeah. And I got some pictures of that. So there's their detail on the inside. I mean, we did, the wall has been fattened, but we didn't have to mess with their casing. So we just used, you know, sheet grade plywood. You could, you could go hog wild there. I mean, I was paying for these projects. I mean, I told the homeowner I would not bring their, I, 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 I promised to bring their home back to as is or better condition. But I, I, I didn't, like, I didn't put swimming pools in these houses or, uh, you know, <laughs> granite countertops. This is the sash weight cavity when we took the siding, you know, down. So that's, that's, that gets avoided when a window replacement guy comes. Um, basically, he'll, he'll do the rough opening of what was there and pop it in. Uh, well, that's gone. We, we, we basically, the window buck takes that up. But like the previous picture, am I, did I see something wrong? Do I see a new replacement window, double insulated glass, double thickness glass, but also a storm window on the outside? Or is that just a screen? That's a screen. This was one of the houses where we where, where we did change the window. Um, well, you'll remember they had had their windows changed in a, a few years in advance. They, the, the weight buck cavity was still there. We uh, we dealt with it with the thermax and and the thermoply. Right. No. Right. We 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 covered over that. It became part of the structure. Uh, well, I wouldn't consider it an air cavity because we isolated it. it, it it's been sealed. It it right, it won't be a chimney. Uh, this was just constraints. I'm, I'm just showing this as a, a, a constraint photo. This is our first layer of thermoply after they've bucked out the window. This was the neighbor's house, right, like four feet away. So they, they put scaffolding up in there to deal with that. And that chimney, that's, this is the house that had four chimneys. I mean, that, that was one of the chimneys that had to come down. And there's a, quite a market for uh, that type of brick. It's an architectural brick. I mean, people were excited. They were, they were worried about having to get rid of it. I think they got some money for it. Yep. So there's the window buck with part of the uh, uh, thermoply applied. Here they're uh, two by six. Two by six. Because we're coming out four inches, thermoply, and then uh, I, I think they, they, they ripped it. They might have even ripped it for the right, uh, but, I, but no, because uh, it's, uh, it's bought two by six, so it's really five and three quarter. It's not a six inch. If it was dimensional, that'd be a little bit different issue. Um, here they're just doing some, some details. Window bucks. Window bucks. <laughs> Before we, a lot of this they did before they got the last side of the. So they tried to stage the project, which was impressive. I mean, to minimize their costs, because they gave me a bid. We, you know, they held to the bid pretty good. I allowed change orders, but we were, you know, tried to minimize them. Um, they, uh, they orchestrated the work quite, quite nicely. I was impressed, and, and I had nothing to do with that. We just, you know, we went from the bid. But most of these projects were soup to nuts, six weeks house uh, back to normal. Yeah. Uh, no, that's coming off. Yep. Uh, application of the thermal ply. That's that air barrier we specified. This is some flashing detail. It's better to work with this on a shady day. <laughs> uh, that stuff is pretty nasty. They're making it better though now. They're putting rip tape on it and much more uh, uniform comes in uh, better sheets. Window buck for the doors because exterior doors on existing housing, a lot of them are really bad. We basically treated them just like the window. We, we usually replace them. Flashing. There's the window in place. At that's, new, a that's a new window. Yeah, we uh, specified a certain U value, and there were two window companies willing to uh, provide. I mean, they didn't give me the windows, but they uh, provided a list price for the project. 
Uh, serious materials was one of them. Another one was inline fiberglass. Accurate door win would meet the requirements. Duxton, but have your checkbook. Um, serious materials is one of the nicest windows, and it's American made. It's made in California, and they're now um, they're, they're getting much more uh, uh, penetration in the uh, east also. Low E glass, they've uh, figured out a way basically to get the performance of a triple pane, but they do it with a double pane and a, a interior layer, an interior like uh, film they created. There's a great YouTube video. Um, if you Google under, you, or you, under YouTube, type in serious materials explained or something, and uh, it shows how they make it. So this is, yeah, just more detail. That's the same, I have to think. That's, that's a house that got a storm. Yeah, that's, that's a storm window. Yep. <coughs> yep. 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 I'm, I'm jumped a little here, but now you'll notice, this is a good example, Tough R. Tough R had the same insulative properties as Thermax. It doesn't meet the ASTM 84. So these guys were smart. They met my spec in the basement with, with the uh, Thermax, but Thermax is much more costly than the Dow uh, board. Uh, so they used the Tough R on the exterior uh, of a couple of the houses, and it met, met, met the spec, so that was fine as long as they didn't use it in an exposed uh, interior surface. New door. Um, just detail, they, uh, I think they put the plastic over the window just to avoid any uh, like uh, mess. Okay, um, yeah. This is just finishing up one of the, the smaller houses. This is that bungalow house that had all the ice dripping off of it. Yeah, when I get to the roof, we'll stop. Uh, yes, yep, yep. This is a hot porches. I mentioned porches earlier. So all that Thermax had to be slid up behind those porches. So they cut, they cut the board back. I mean, sometimes in, in, a, in a project where the, where the homeowner is, is paying and, and probably has some means, you might talk people into getting rid of porches or building new. There was one home where we spent so much time configuring with the little back porch. I offered to split the cost with her of a 10 by 10 deck. She couldn't come up with it, so we kind of had to deal with it. But that would have been a great, in, in a regular project, the contractor might negotiate with them, hey, uh, you know, the, a porch would make this much easier, uh, much easier for the detail, and you'd have a better space. Because what they had really wasn't the greatest, but we kind of had to work with it. Uh, that's the two family. That's blower door day number one. That was pretty exciting for the contractors because they wanted to see what they had achieved with just the thermal ply and the, uh, the taping of that. So we don't have any of the rigid on yet. Uh, all we have is the thermal ply down to the sheathing, and we've uh, done the windows. And we got the number down like, I think we got it down like 40% with just that layer. Just more detail. Talk about screws. I mean, <laughs> in the basement we had six inch screws. These are seven and a half inch screws because we're going through a furring strip well, here, not the furring strip yet, but we're going through four inches of rigid, through the thermoply, through the sheathing, uh, and into uh, a stud. And these houses, because they're older, they had real dimensional, like two by six, two by four studs. So it was strong. You start to see some of the transition up to the roof. We've already re-roofed this house. Um, and you see this, the rigid, the first layer coming up the side. Here's the second layer. So we tape the interior. On these, we tape the first layer. Tape. Then we stagger the joints. So if we put, if we put the first layer on, the, on the, four, the four side is horizontal, the next layer, they probably put the eight side horizontal. Stagger. Uh, this was a nice detail. They marked all the studs before we worked our way out because the last thing they want to do is drive their seven and a half inch screw into nothing. So uh, the house had decent studding and all this was marked on the perimeter. I think that backer rod picture's coming up. Yep. 
There's the backer rod. So basically what that is is that squishy foam material, and then we built a, uh, a ledger off of that. Because mainly, that's our structure. We're looking to, to, to marry to the exterior of the house, and we're, over, we're, we're, we're putting like an overcoat on the, uh, on the house. I mean, the, the house was like this, and, and we took it to that, because we're, we're, going to, you know, we're going to the basement. So that back around allowed for that. Oh, yeah. They, it was, it, I was so proud of these guys. I mean, they were, and they would love to do more of this. Uh, I don't have all the money to keep them going. What we'd like to do is get, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, educate and promote and, and get people to consider this. Because with the downed economy, people are actually considering staying in their existing houses much longer now. And if you're vulnerable to the, to the whims of the fuel, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity. Great job. People do. People yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be done in China. I mean, it's local labor. This is looking underneath. Um, you can see the, the nice seal on, the, uh, on that impregnated, uh, there's a name for that type of uh, exterior blocking, but, and, and the way we, this, this worked out great. I mean, with, 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 a, with a poured foundation, we probably could have gotten a decent seal with, um, you know, maybe a piece of rigid, but also that gives us some meat to, to bite. And the final detail. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they've uh, they, they've put it in. Um, I think on the on the le on the outside of that, the, the right up in there, there's a gap, and they went along the horizontal and sprayed in there, and that worked its way into that into that crack. Because the, the detail showed it on the underside of the rigid as well. Yep. Yep. I don't see that. It, it, I'm looking at the board. Part right. They, they haven't sprayed there yet. They will. They will. I got them before they did that. No, because then you got you already got the closure piece on, and the detail had like what looked like two inches of foam. And yep. Then yep. The closure piece. We we did do that. I've got a slide that shows it coming out, oozing out the side. I just think at this point they've already put some d down farther, and then when they put their next board, they're going to go in and do do that one. I just I wanted to grab a picture of of that piece of uh, Adventech. You'll. I I think I've got one. This is the strapping. This is the siding going on. This was the house with four chimneys. So a lot of houses, especially in Utica, city areas, the, the, the porch is conventional, and the, a lot of these had covered porches. I mean, we didn't want to take that off the house. It would really change the, the front of the house. Most of the, obviously, most of the porches face the, uh, the, the front of the street, so we, um, we, we dealt with porches. This two-family home had a sag in the front. Uh, it had a structural issue, so we knew about that going in, so uh, we, we, we corrected that. We were able to do that some of the insulative work, but then we corrected the uh, the beam uh, as we went into the project. This is just another porch sill connection. Some of them, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of different porches. Uh, the one on the left there is the one where we spent like four extra days, and I would rather have bought her a 10 by 10 deck or had her buy a 10 by 10 deck, um, but we we had to actually deal with that because that's. Out there, I mean, that's not conditioned space, but, but, but behind it, it is. So we had to, like, we had to get our four inches and a half, four and a half inches of detail behind that, uh, behind that porch wall. So here you'll see they've cut back the uh, wainscot boards about an uh, inch and a half, and this is a lot, and then they made some blocking, and this allowed them to, to slide the uh, thermoply up through uh, and, and, and make that continuous. It added, you know, a lot of this add. It's 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 not it's it's not just a square box. This is um, one of the houses that got the storm window treatment, and there's your foam. Uh, I forgot your name, but there's your foam coming out the uh, bottom. Oozing. So it oozing out. <laughs> we, I told you, we we we. Uh, we were looking at that in between bridges. Right. Ah. Uh, yeah. 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 So that so the foam wasn't totally. Uh, 
you know, not present on these job sites, but it didn't require like an entire, uh, you know, um, tractor trailer full of it. Because with foam, there's also environmental uh, conditions. You can't spray it. it. It needs an optimum temperature to apply and set up. And uh, some of this work, uh, because each, each contractor, we had two teams that we hired. Each, each team did two houses. We started in the late, early summer of 10, 2010. So two of the houses, you know, started to linger into the, um, into the late fall uh, with temperatures uh, vary. So there's the amount of like detail we had to deal with with that little bump out porch. I mean basically we've got the thermoply, we've got the first layer, the second layer, we still got to tape that and then we got to seal I mean, I mean th because that's our that, that's our exterior thermal barrier. So uh, and, and insulative barrier. So d my point is porches uh, re require and um, orchestrate a lot of extra detail. Again, we, we put the exterior, the air barrier to the exterior, that, that makes it a lot easier, but this is an example when you're dealing with a porch of kind of what you deal with in every room if you define the air barrier on the interior of the house. Uh, so the attic eave on the roof on the, uh, this was one of the houses that got a new roof, so we extended the overhang to get moisture away from the house, throw it off the house, give enough of an overhang to protect all the uh, siding that we're, uh, all the, the build out and the siding that we're going to have there, and then make that transition. Um, that's, that's not the most optimum uh, um, cleanliness there of, of, of uh, attachment from, from roof eave, rake to uh, wall, but it's, uh, it was functional. And, and the advantage here is we blower doored this before we started to cover that with rigid. Question? What was that old soffit structure there? Wasn't Some it? of the uh, old where we married into new. Yeah. yeah. This was um, the two floor house that uh, the upstairs in the attic. Now, with that house, that house got a new roof but we had to isolate that front porch from the thermal envelope because the front porch, if we didn't do anything with the wall that was on the, above the second floor that went to the outside of the porch, we basically had an, an attic space that was now a bridge to the exterior. So we wound up insulating that front interior wall. And uh, a bit about attics. Um, one of the things we found, you'll remember, I wanted to work with the building crew in its entirety. I wanted to have that crew be the main contractor and minimize the hiring of other contractors. What I found in the, in the end, when I, we did the uh, kind of the round table and gathered up everybody and said, okay, what went good, what went bad, uh, some contractors, as soon as they set foot off of the ground onto a roof. The workers' compensation insurance package that they have, which probably costs a lot to begin with, uh, ratchets into a whole nother flavor. And uh, so with one of the crews, they actually hired, they, they, they uh, subcontracted to a roofing contractor to avoid that issue. So that was good learning for me because part of this is to get this into the workforce, the market stream, where maybe, maybe roofing people do the roof. The ex we teach them how to do exterior uh, roof and attic uh, improvements rather than just put on new roofs. So that was a, that, that was, that was a good indicator because that's, that's, a, that's a business constraint that, that might keep a, a company away from what, what we're trying to promote. Working in the attic, you can, I mean, the winter also, you, you don't have as much of a constraint uh, of being outside. Um, okay, if you're going to do the attic, there's a lot of stuff in an attic that, that might be called insulation, but I can guarantee you it's not performing like insulation. So with this attic, the first thing we had to do was, was evacuate anything in there, which was 
considered to be possibly insulation. Because we need a baseline, once again. We, we want a we we roof attic assembly of like R60. We can't count on that providing the R22, uh, you know, or whatever. So we evacuated it. Oh, everything. Chickens, <laughs> dead mice, whatever. Uh, uh, big, big, um, uh, big shop vac, basically. I've got a, uh, it's not in the training here, but I've got a picture of the, uh, the tube coming out the roof. I mean, that guy's vacuum there, he had a, basically a bag to the exterior, and it just, uh, I think he was able, I don't know if that landfill, he might have got some, you know, he might have been able to take it somewhere <coughs> for uh, reprocessing or something. But this is the key. Once the roof, uh, once the attic is evacuated, this is uh, high expansion, closed cell. So you only need, all we're doing with this is air sealing. So we're putting down like a skim coat layer of, um, of this insulation. I think Margot used the term earlier today, flash and bat. But we're not going to do the bat part. We're flashing this, and then we're going to fill this with cellulose. So this gives us the air sealing. And we're going to come up the side of the walls uh, to, to make sure we've uh, married to our exterior rigid that we brought up the sides. What did you do at the junction boxes? Um, all of, like, like the ones that are mounted, some of those, the yeah. yeah so, the right. The they, they, I think they, they, they built over that. They, 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 they did a, the yeah, yeah, they built a little and detail so over it. Yeah. Yep. And then was that gasketed or? I think it was gas. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Because we don't want them going in the attic anymore after we're done. So here it's coming up the sides. And then we fill it with cellulose. Now that's 14 inches of settled depth cellulose. Um, the key there is. To, to blow it in and let it settle and then get, because, uh, I mean, the, the, first, the first application, you know, it's fairly, uh, it, it's fairly high. There's a lot of air voids in there and it's going to settle out and you won't get the R value that's intended. Um, so, again, because we did the good air sealing, now we just go with cellulose. That's fairly inexpensive. Uh, people could do that themselves. I mean, you can get a kit and blow it in by the bag. So if we didn't do the attic, we did the roof. We used metal roofing because uh, I did some analysis in um, Means, the, uh, the book that estimates, gives uh, pricing estimates. And basically, uh, uh, we're putting contractors on roofs where, I mean, some of them weren't doing that anyway, which I learned through the process. But working with metal, it, it typically has a longer life expectancy, so it's got a better uh, rating. And we're putting it down in sheets, which much makes it much easier to uh, fur over the rigid insulation that we've built up there. This was one of the roof decks that obviously we had to take the roof deck off. off off also. Um, this was one of the houses we're pretty convinced that we kept this house from like b becoming rotten. I mean this house was terrible uh, in terms of, uh, this was the one that also needed the, the basement uh, jackhammered because what was happening, all that moisture was going up the sides of the interior, uh, exterior walls that weren't insulated so it's just massive balloon frame. You're, right, exactly. Remember like the Utica houses are all balloon framed. It just, it's just a moisture home up there. And, and I mean, the roof was about to fall in. So we resheathed this and then uh, put, put new roof on it. Uh, there's the application on the two story house, the multifamily, or the, the two family. Um, so we got the, we, we down to the sheathing and then come back out with um, tar paper. Uh, that was our uh, air barrier and then rigid. Uh, this was the roofing crew, so they were comfortable up there. Um, but again, the, the BPI contractor, what I learned was, you know, that's, they were voiding. If they put their own men up there, that was just, they're totally voiding their insurance policy. So then they're at risk and, you know, the whole show comes to an end. I'm certainly not, my goal isn't to put companies out of business getting this work done. 
Uh, it's ripped Adventech again, same, same Adventech. Yeah, this is a bad safety picture. <laughs> uh, again, not the greatest tape. We would have preferred they use um, uh, the, the um, I Grace ice and water uh, tape here, but they taped the seams. They taped the first layer of uh, rigid, which was the objective. Uh, detail at the rafter uh, 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 ridge, so the, the metal's on there, the siding's coming up, it's where everything meets. We uh, cleated these roofs because we were afraid, because they are so close to other houses, so we put um, the uh, snow stops on the metal roof. <coughs> 